to Captain J.G. O'Brien. May you have great success in your retirement. Affectionately, the men of Hook and Ladder 23. What's this little button? Oh, maybe it's a music box. It doesn't work. It's not a music box, it's just a little button. Oh, well, it's beautiful. I just don't know what to say. I, I suppose there's a little speech that goes with this. No, just the watch. I mean, from me. I'm gonna miss this firehouse, the men, and especially you, Kibby, and you, Fitch. A captain is only as good as his lieutenants, and I've had two of the best. Now one of you is going to take my place. One of you is going to become a captain. If it were my choice, I don't know which one I'd pick. It makes no difference to us, sir. It does to me. <laughs> I hope they pick you, Kibby. Pound for pound, you're the best fireman in the department. <laughs> That's very sweet of you to say, Art. But I'm not fit to carry your hose. <laughs> You've been friends a long time, haven't you? I met him 20 years ago. In rookie school, we jumped into the same net. <laughs> we even share the same house. Art is one of the great landlords of our nation. You can't hate a man who pays his rent on time. <laughs> uh, I just came from the commissioner's office, sir. Thank you. Well, this is it. Good luck, Kibby. Good luck, Fitch. Captain J.G. O'Brien. O'Brien got it. I knew he did. <laughs> I'm O'Brien, Kibby. <laughs> to Captain J.G. O'Brien, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. It is therefore my recommendation to succeed Captain J.G. O'Brien in command of Hook Ladder 23, Lieutenant Russell Kibbe. And with it, the rank of acting captain. Signed, Commissioner George Sullivan. Kibbe, my congratulations. Thank you, sir. Well, Kibbe, this is going to be your office from now on. I think I'd better go and say goodbye to the men. Yes, sir. Art, would you call my men together, please? <laughs> don't push, Captain. <laughs> Just don't push. <laughs> Here we go. Nancy, we've got to tell them. Kevin, we have the two most irrational fathers in the whole world. If we tell them we want to get married, the whole house might blow up. Can't we keep it a secret? For how long? Forever. I, it wouldn't work. Supposing we had children. Well, once they learn to talk, they're liable to say something. <laughs> Darling, stop worrying. Tomorrow's the day, and, and, and two grown men can get through one day without fighting. I'll see to it. Also, our mothers are determined. I wish I was as confident as you are. You're so mature that way, Kevin. Hey, it's my father. He'll kill me. Oh, where are you going? Home. Uh, you live upstairs. That's right. Arthur, uh, we're home. Hmm? Again. Mm -hmm. I heard mm -hmm for dinner mm -hmm in the movies and mm -hmm all the way home. Look, if you don't want to talk to me, at least write something on a pad. How can you enjoy a movie when there's a man sleeping upstairs? in the house that I own, who got up at six o'clock in the morning to put garbage in my golf bag. You're the landlord. You're supposed to buy him a garbage can. I got a two-family can. There's room for 18 inches of garbage for each family. His garbage is overweight. Mm, but all fakes him. Come on. Do that. Do that. 
Camp the lady, sing the song, all the do-da day. All the do-da night. The kippies must be asleep. It's two in the morning. I can't find my keys. I hope I didn't wake you. Good night, Kibby. <laughs> you were having a nightmare. If I was having a nightmare, I would have screamed. Never wake a laughing man up. <laughs> a few more seconds, I would have been rid of him. Like crab grass. A lawnmower. Maybe he was dreaming about me. <laughs> hmm. So that's his game, eh? Well, he won't get away with it. I've got him dead to rights now. Kevin, get in here on the double. Russell, please, not today. Don't start in with him today. Butt out. When I want you to butt in, you'll butt in. But today, butt out. Where's the lease? Where's my lease? It's Oof. falling apart like the Dead Sea Scrolls. You've read it 12,000 times. Every tenant has a right to protect himself against vicious landlords. Kevin, my son, I do not wish to yell. So get in here! Like the fish isn't any more vicious than you are. <laughs> He's not, eh? <laughs> Take a look at that. Kevin? Russell. What is it, Dad? What's the matter? Downstairs. We're suing again. And this time we've got him. Aren't you going to put on your bathrobe? No one will see me. I'll stand in the grass. <laughs> Seven o'clock in the morning and they're already fighting. I know. They slept late today. <laughs> Russell, please, don't say anything foolish. Arthur, be nice. Be friendly. Cut the grass. My grass is cut. I'm going to say it once more. Nicely. Cut the grass. And I'm going to answer you once more. Not nicely. My grass is cut. Mother, what's wrong? What do you think's wrong? What's always wrong? Get away from the window. You'll get drenched. Oh, no. Not today. Not today of all days. Kevin? They're out there, both of them. I know. My father's going to kill your father. Mine's going to murder you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> this is your last final finishing ending warning. Cut the grass. And I repeat ditto once again for the fourth time. My grass is cut. Fitch. Whereas the party of the first part, referred to in paragraph one as the landlord... <laughs> will provide all maintenance, repairs, services, and general upkeep to the aforementioned premises with no obligation to the party of the second part, referred to in paragraph one as the tenant. Cut the grass. Paragraph six. Whereas if the tenant <laughs> shall injure, destroy, or make addition to any part of the aforementioned premises, he shall be obliged at the landlord's request <laughs> to restore said property to its original state. You made my grass too long? Restore it to its original state. Bitch, I'm counting to three. If you're not cutting, I'm suing. I'd like to see that. I'd just like to see that. 
Oh, you don't think I can sue? I don't think you can count to three. <laughs> you all heard that? He insulted me in public grass. Where's my attorney? Attorney? Attorney! Here, Dad. I'm instigating a $2 million lawsuit against this man for defamation of character, injury to personal integrity, and insult to a man's inalienable right, dignity. Russell, come upstairs. Your pajamas are falling down. I'm not taking a step until my grass looks like his grass. You're not happy here, Kitty? Move. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Here's the papers. Sign all three copies. You have it notarized, and I'll call the movers. I'm not moving from this house until they carry me away dead. Are you making me an offer? Can I say something, please? Tell them. Tell them what the law says, son. Well, I really don't think it's necessary to get legal, Dad. Don't call me Dad. But I'm your son. I don't need a son now. I need an attorney. <laughs> well, uh, according to the lease, Mr. Fitch, you are required to cut the grass. What? I'll be glad to do it for you. I'll pretend I never heard you say that. Go back into the house and don't you ever talk like that again in front of me. Russell, he's just trying to help. I want that head inside the window. Father, come in and eat your cornflakes. I've got you dead to rights now, Fitch, and you know it. Cut the grass. And uh, Marsha? Yes, Arthur? Turn the heat up. All the way. If I'm going to sweat out here, Kippy, you're going to sweat in there. You're asking for it, Fitch, and you're going to get it. Not before I give it to you, Kibby. Russell, no, don't. Arthur, please, your cornflake. Russell! Arthur! <laughs> How can two grown men act like that? A captain and a lieutenant in the fire department standing there hosing each other. I had to tell the neighbors the grass was burning. Russell doesn't sleep. He just thinks of nasty things to do all night. I said, Russell, this isn't healthy. You have to get yourself another hobby. It just doesn't make sense. They were such good friends, weren't they? Twenty years. Twenty years in the fire department together. The commissioner called them the greatest hose team in the business. Why, oh, they could put a cigarette out in 200 yards in a stiff wind. If only they didn't make Russell a captain. That's when all the trouble started. No, it all started the day we moved in here with you and Arthur became a landlord. Why can't two families living together get along? That's right. We get along, don't we, Selena? Selena, don't we get along? <laughs> Sure, we get along. Hey, we get along, so why don't they get along? Because they're men. Men don't know how to get along. But women know how to get along. He was so mad. Do you know what he wanted me to do today? What? He wanted me to put cornflakes in your washing machine. Oh, isn't that terrible? <laughs> you didn't do it, did you? No, because we get along. Well, that's right, I forgot. We get along. Hello, darling. How are you? Humiliated. Uh, I, I've got to pose as a milkman to get in and see my own girl. Did you come up with any ideas today? Just one. How does not getting married appeal to you? <laughs> Don't worry, you'll get married. If we could just get them to the wedding without telling them why. We could set fire to the chapel and turn in an alarm. You'll get wet, but at least you'll get married. <laughs> Wash that engine. Pick up those sponges and don't forget to wash under the ladder. Yes, yes sir. sir. 
What is this, a vacation? Get busy, get busy! Duda, Duda, it's all I hear. Duda! What are you laying there like that for? <laughs> I've got it. The backyard. We'll, we'll have a barbecue. At the same time? Well, why not? No, no, the kibbies on one side, the pitchers on the other. You think it's safe? With hot griddles in their hands? <laughs> I, I think it's worth a try. What can we lose? You were going to put cornflakes in my washing machine? Who told you to stop singing? I didn't tell you to stop singing. Stop singing! Yes, sir, but the captain told us to wash the engine down. He found fingerprints this morning. <laughs> the captain told you. I told you to sing, and you'll sing. Now sing! And not wash the engine, Lieutenant? You know how the captain feels about dirty engines, sir. He won't go to a fire unless we're clean. <laughs> we're not going to win the Intercity Mixed Voices Glee Club Championship with a spick and span fire engine. I need a bass and a baritone. Now get up and sing! Smokey, please, go chase cats. Don't lay around. <laughs> <laughs> From Section A. Therefore, the evidence is conclusive that the fire in the Big Bunny Luncheonette was caused by a faulty Duda. 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 I gave orders for washing, and you're still singing. You disobeyed my washing orders. You know what this championship means to me, Kibby. We've been practicing Glee Club every Saturday afternoon for a year. This is Saturday afternoon. We're practicing Glee Club. Not until that engine is washed. Get someone else to wash it, because they're going to be in here singing. OK, you wash it. I'm a lieutenant of the New York City Fire Department. I don't wash engines. You don't wash that engine. And you'll be a fireman in the New York City Fire Department. <laughs> if I wash that engine, you better bring home a lot of candles. Because you ain't getting electricity for a moment. <laughs> so much as one bulb goes out, you'll not only wash the engine, you'll wash the firehouse, including the dog. We'll see about that. Well, we'll just see it. We'll see about that. Captain, Lieutenant, phone calls for both of you. <laughs> Captain Kibby speaking. Lieutenant Fitch speaking. Oh, hello, Selena. Oh, hello, Marsha. You want me to what? You want me to what? All right, give me the list. Go on, I'll remember it. Three pounds of hamburgers. Three pounds of hamburgers. Six frankfurters. Six frankfurters. Two pounds of potato salad. Two pounds of potato salad. Three dill pickles. Three dill pickles. Nine cans of beer. And eight cans of beer. Nine cans, stupid. Nine. <laughs> what? Oh, I'll be home around six o'clock. What? Yes, I'll be home at six. You're not going home until you wash that engine. Uh, hello, Marsha. I'll be home at seven. And get my toolkit out. I got some electrical work to do. Mmm, <laughs> that smells wonderful, Russ, doesn't it, Kevin? Oh, you can't beat Pop's cooking. <laughs> Have another beer, Pop. Did the lights come back on yet? <laughs> yeah, yes, Dad, I found the trouble. It must have been a short circuit. Short circuit, huh? <laughs> Those new pull-off beer cans are marvelous, aren't they? Yes, but he's got the old kind. It's very mad. Are they done yet, Arthur? No. They would have been done if I'd have been home at six. But I was late, so they're raw. You work like a dog, you eat like a dog. Please, Russell, just cook the meat, not us. Okay, it's ready. Get the rolls. Get the rolls, it's ready. Hamburgers always taste better outside. This is fun, isn't it, Dad? Eating out here, <laughs> together. How can you have any fun when you haven't any privacy? Next week, I'm putting up a wall, like in China. A great big wall. Mm, that looks perfect, Russ. Now have another beer, Dad? I don't want another beer. I want some ketchup. Ketchup? Oh, dear, I forgot to tell you to buy the ketchup. What do you mean? No ketchup? 
I can't eat hamburgers without ketchup. I hate hamburgers without ketchup. Now, Marsha, pass the ketchup. <laughs> Marsha, could we borrow the ketchup? I don't want any ketchup from a stranger. But you don't like hamburgers without ketchup. I love hamburgers without ketchup. Well, I don't. Nancy, may I have the ketchup, please? Of course, Kevin. Put down that ketchup. But Kevin wants to borrow the ketchup. You put that ketchup on your hamburger, and that's the last hamburger you'll ever get to put ketchup on. Well, Dad, it's my hamburger, and it's Nancy's ketchup. And if I want to put her ketchup on my hamburger, I'm going to put it on. Nancy, may I have the ketchup, please? If you put our ketchup on his hamburger, you're no daughter of mine. Just because I want to lend him ketchup for his hamburger? This is bigger than ketchup and hamburgers. Man can be pushed just so far. And when his last shred of human dignity is threatened, there's no retreat. He stands and fights. Put down that ketchup. No. You listen to me, Dad. And you too, Mr. Kibby. If the both of you want to go on like this, acting like two school children, that's your concern. But there's no reason why the rest of us can't be friendly and behave like normal human beings. And I, for one, intend to start right now. Kevin, here's the ketchup. Thank you, Nancy. Will you marry me? I certainly will. Dad, Kevin and I would like to get married. Dad, I said Kevin and I would like to get married. Dad, did you hear? Nancy and I want to get married. Well, please, say something. Give her back the ketchup. <laughs> Take your hamburger and go to your room. Russell, your son wants to get married. They're in love, Arthur. In love? My daughter and their son? While I was washing his engines, you were kissing his son? Give her back the ketchup. Russell, the Frankfurters are burning. He took my bass, my baritone, and now he wants my daughter. Who's marrying his daughter? The man that turned off my water in July? Russell, the Frankfurters are burning. Hey, hey, run this through my heart. <laughs> Roast me on the grill. But if you're going to kill me, do it before the wedding. Russell, the table is burning. I'll remember this day. I may forget Pearl Hawk. I may forget the island. But this day, I'll remember. You're not being fair. You won't even listen. Turn the water on someone. The bench is burning. It's her fault. I told her never to let her out of the house. What? What did I do to deserve this? What? Selena, Kevin, somebody, call the fire department before the house burns. Oh, <laughs> be a hundred years old. I'll be the first hundred-year-old woman in America ever to get married. I was going to throw a big party in the backyard. Did you see what it looks like this morning? Toast. I bake her a toast. Garbage man. Hey, it's Kevin. I'll get it. Hello, darling. It's all right. They're still at the Elks meeting. We're going to have to work out a system, Kevin. I was the garbage man, too. Well, after tomorrow, we may never have to go sneaking around back doors again. Oh, you, you have another plan? Only this one can't miss. It's surefire. So was yesterday's. What's the plan? Christmas. Christmas is going to come early this year to Jackson Heights. I can't get over it. A set of Sammy Sneed golf clubs. Why would he do such a thing? Didn't he hear the way I was yelling at him? Well, he said some pretty nasty things, too. I guess he just wanted to apologize. Oh, I expected him to apologize, but I didn't expect golf clubs. Please forgive an old friend for acting like an old fool. So why didn't the old fool sign it? Oh, pride. He wanted to show you how much he liked you, but he just didn't know how to come right out and say it. Yeah. Well, I suppose he's not altogether rotten. But I'm not going to apologize. You don't have to. Just go over and say hello. Hello, eh? Well, if I meet him around the house, maybe I'll say hello. I think I'll take a walk around the house. Please forgive an old friend for acting like an old fool. Gee, I wonder what it is. I don't trust him. I just don't trust him. <laughs>
Well, look at it and see. It's a bomb! It's a bomb! Oh, Dad, no! Pull out the bathtub! Get out of the way! Quick! Dad, it's a bowling ball! A bowling ball! Huh? How do you know? You've got your fingers in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. She isn't that nice. He sent you a bowling ball. Maybe it's set to go off when it hits the pins. He's just trying to make up with you. You think so? He knows how much you like bowling. If he can be friendly, why can't you? Who says I'm not friendly? If he wants to be friendly, I can be as friendly as anyone. I'll see you later. Where are you going? Outside to be friendly. <laughs> Oh, uh, hello there. Oh, I, I didn't see you there. Hello. Uh, new bowling ball? Where? Oh, this. Uh, an old fool, I mean, an old friend sent it to me. Nice golf club. Thanks. There is Sammy Sneeds. He loaned them to you? No. They're a gift. A very nice gift. Say, are you going to be home at 7.30? I thought I'd come up and take a look at the pipes. Make sure the water's coming up nice and hot. 7.30? Could you make it at 8? I was going to cut the grass at 7.30. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I guess it is kind of nice. But listen, you know the old saying. If you can't be nice to a friend, you won't have a friend to be nice to. True. Very true. Did you read that somewhere? No. I ate it last week. I found it in a Chinese fortune cookie. <laughs> could get along like that. The wedding's in two weeks, and look at them. They're as happy as a couple of kids. Could I have the ketchup, Martha? Oh, sure. <laughs> Hello, dear. You're home early. That's the way it is, that's the way I want it, and that's the way it's going to be. That may be the way it is, and that may be the way you want it, but that's not the way it's going to be. Okay, if that's how you feel about it. What's this all about? Who knows? It's just a lover's quarrel. They're a little nervous before the wedding, that's all. There's no reason to behave like children. If you're going to get along in this world, you've got to learn how to control your temper. We get along, right, Art? <laughs> right, Gus, we get along. My girl has no right to act that way, no matter what stupid thing you may have said to her. What do you mean, stupid? Well, he must have said something. If my girl is so upset, it was probably something stupid. Give her back the ketchup. Russell, don't start it, please. Give her back the ketchup! Mother, say something. Don't spoil the wedding. Wedding? What wedding? There'll be apologies before there's wedding. Russell, just for two more weeks. I'll give you two more seconds. Give her back the ketchup! <laughs> <laughs> 